my new camera, the Nikon ZF. Hi, and thank you for clicking on this video. My name is Phil, aka Phil, and today I want to unbox with you the Nikon ZF, which I just got today in the mail, and also share my thoughts on the on this camera, and also why YouTube previews are wrong about this new Nikon camera. Just to let you know, to give you an overhead shot, I installed here a selfie stick. That's the thing, just right now in the frame just to give you a perspective as an overhead. So let's unbox the Nikon ZF and I'm curious in what kind of experience Nikon gives because this is my first Nikon camera. If you are a subscriber of this channel, first of all, thank you very much for that. And you might know that most of my videos lately I shot with the Leica Q3 and one and two videos with the latest iPhone. And therefore I'm kind of spoiled what's regarding the unboxing experience of cameras. I had them in the past uh, Sony's and Canon's, especially the Canon unboxing experience is for me personally like unwrapping your McDonald's or Burger King menu. Sony has improved slightly in the last few years but also not major and that's why I'm also curious what kind of experience we have here with Nikon. But I also understand that most people who buy cameras don't care about unboxing experience so take it for what it is let's give it a spin so i think this is the right angle for you guys let's have a look so oh, cable already fallen off this is usb-c to usb-c cable we have manuals so, service warranty and then another manual on the manual, put it to the side. So that was the first compartment. Let's see what's the next. Okay, uh, since I have the uh, ZF with the 40 millimeter F2, this will be probably the Zens. So let's unwrap that. It's in bubble wrap. And just put in standardly. This is nothing special. Okay, this is the 40 millimeter. Hope the camera catches this and hopes I to hide my face. So that's this. Let's put that aside. What we have here, this is the battery. Camera strap, just a standard strap, put it back, and the main compartment will be probably the camera. And here it is. An icon ZF. Quite nice. And I think that's already it, so yeah, nothing special regarding unboxing experience, at least everything was put in the box quite neatly organized, but nothing special. That's quite interesting for cameras which cost over 2000 bucks, but yeah. And let's have a look again about this beautiful piece camera let's focus it's quite nice let me just put on the lens this is the first thing which i'm noticing that's why you probably wondering why i'm struggling kind of the, the lens cap and yeah, general landscape and the lenses are just turning the difference side than what I'm used to. So just something I just noticed. Yeah, you can just quickly see full frame sensor ZF. And this is also something I just already 
saw or heard about the 40 millimeter and I think the 28 millimeter f2.8 which has the same retro style has a plastic button for lens which costs about between depending on where you live between 300 and 400 bucks for an icon newbie like me not great because I'm only used to metal buttons uh, of lenses, even the cheap ones. But it is what it is. Okay, let's put it on. Focus. Let's put in the battery. And let's turn it on for the first time. Okay, that flame looks like the, the battery was not charged. As you can see, I just turn the camera on, but nothing happens. So it looks like I have to put in the charger before turning, doing the first spin of this camera. But in that case, I will do that later. And let me share my thoughts about this camera, why I got it and why I think that why a lot of YouTube previewers who had this camera before the embargo are in my opinion wrong about, uh, regarding one specific uh, opinion. Before I start, let me just pick up another camera which has the same retro style and this is the Canon, most of you already know, Canon AE1, an analog camera. Let's put it side by side. I'm not sure if you're able to see that, but it should be fine. Also gives you a rough size comparison of these two. Uh, all right. What do I mean regarding why some YouTube previewers are wrong about this Nikon ZF? Most of them are almost all of them were quite uh, hyped on this camera. Most of them because of the retro style, because uh, Nikon is the only brand which is doing something like this. And they have a heritage of uh, designing cameras uh, besides uh, Canon back in the days. And although the specs uh, of this camera is quite impressive, a lot of uh, voices uh, pointed out that this might be the, also the specs of the Nikon Z6 III, which is currently not released at the time of this recording. And Nikon should have released the Z6 Mark III first before releasing this puppy, the ZF. And in my opinion, I think that Nikon did the right move releasing this camera first before releasing the Z6 Mark III. The reason is that if you're a camera enthusiast like me, you might watch a lot of social media. Me personally, I watch a lot of YouTube videos and I think you have the almost the same subscriptions uh, like me regarding camera reviewers, etc. And over the last few years, I have the impression that there are the uh, standard camera brands and each camera brand has a certain image in the social media community. For example, Leica. I'm shooting right now with the Leica Q3 and already before the social media hype, uh, which I think started with the Q2 a few years ago, Leica is known for their luxurious brand and that their cameras and gear is extremely expensive, but people still see value in buying Leica gear, since Leica just offers a special shooting experience, especially the M line, and Leica has a special history regarding photography. In the social media space, Leica, there are two bases, basically. The one who says there's no special look in Leica, they are overpriced, and the other one say, Leica has a special experience, there's a Leica look, and therefore Leica is known for one of these 
opinions, let's say. Let's move for, forward to Canon. Canon was already always known for their beautiful color science and uh, reliability and also for their very good autofocus. But lately, due to the RF third party incidents, Canon is also known as quite expensive because you don't have the option to buy third party lenses and all the glass of Canon is quite expensive and therefore the community is also bashing on that kind of side. Although the, ca the cameras are still have the old values, people are quite fixated on the bad stuff. Let's look at Sony. Sony is known for their extremely great autofocus and their extremely wide spectrum of uh, lenses, including third-party lenses. But also they are lately having some backlashes, uh, especially because the sheer amount of cameras they released lately in the last few years. The cameras are very great. They are the top-notch technology development which you, you can get nowadays. But their firmware policy and especially for the higher-end models, um, they don't get support like other brands uh, handling their flagships. For example, a great example is the Sony A1, which I think costs about 7,000 bucks. And since released, there are only one or two minor firmware updates, which didn't provide any new features. But since the release of the A1, uh, several cameras has been released and all of them are much cheaper and perform much better regarding performance and features. So you can say that it looks like that Sony just tried to sell cameras and doesn't care about their customers who invest heavily in their system. But looks like that Sony is also trying to do their best to get better in this topic. And now move on to, to Fujifilm. Fujifilm, I got into Fujifilm last year, I guess, also through social media purely due to curiosity and Fujifilm is known for their film simulation stuff and special colors combined with retro design and like the this set F you have several models uh, especially the XT line which have these manual dials and they remind most people of retro cameras this a1 is not a great representative but yeah just an illustration and that's how fujifilm do stuff a little bit different uh, compared to the bigger brands and stand out and therefore they are also known and how do we say it in english have a fan base for this type of camera style so to say one of the negatives uh, so to say regarding fujifilm is that a lot of people appreciate the apc lineup of fujifilm but some also say that it would be great to have such great cameras like from fujifilm which are which could be full frame. But Fujifilm doesn't offer that. Most of my opinion I formed over the last few years is uh, due to social media, which then lead, led to me to buy these camera brands. Mostly I got confirmation regarding what I thought, what kind of, what can offers what, and what's the downside of which camera brand. And now let's look into Nikon. All videos I watched for three or four years about cameras or camera reviews, Nikon always got some backlashes or side comments or anything like that. Most of it's like, yeah, Nikon is great. Nikon has great cameras, great lenses. And then there was always a but. Most of the buts were the autofocus. The autofocus was not nearly as great like the Canons or Sony's and you always had a side joke about Nikon. That's at least how I that interpreted. And over time if you hear that a lot 
you think twice about spending your money in such a camera brand, you don't want to spend your hard-earned money in something second or third place, you want the best. So you look elsewhere. That's for me personally at least. Nikon never interested me because of these images I had about Nikon. Even when Nikon released the Z9 and the Z8, I didn't have much interest in the brand because it, I was, I had some prejudice, I guess, and always thought, yeah, okay, these cameras looks great, but the others are better. And if you look at the price point, of, for example, the Z8 and Z9, they, we are speaking about seven thousand dollars or four or five thousand dollars. Again, you don't want to spend something which is might be not the best and somehow especially sony pushes the social media marketing hard in the last few years it's also not great that we might get an opinion like that on sony but that's an other topic yes and i think that's the reason why nikon had made a great move to release the Z zf before the z6 3 just to break the style of camera releases because thanks to this retro design the retro design well, is not the first one the zfc nikon also released the a few years ago that was an apc camera by releasing this retro design for in full frame format in my opinion nikon was able to put the spotlight on themselves and when all the reviewers had this piece of gear in their hand and tested it in more detail. They also realized that this camera is one of the most modern cameras Nikon can offer right now on the market. And this combination makes customers like me look at that camera because I personally like the retro design, but I also like uh, the latest tech basically. And in my opinion, it looks like that a lot of people are turning their heads and want to buy this camera for themselves because they have the impression that it is a good camera. They don't shy away from the Nikon brand. And I think that's why Nikon make the correct move to release this camera first and instead of Z6 Mark III because with this camera they are able to acquire new customers and not just satisfy their current customer base but also trying to put in more people into the Nikon brand and also showing that they are doing something different compared to all the other brands. If you look at Canon, Sony, Fujifilm, most of the camera releases looks mostly the same. They feel the same. It's just a matter of preference which kinds of brand you shoot. But this retro combined with a full frame sensor, this is currently at the time of recording this video. This is unique. If I look at most of the pages right now in Germany, it looks like people are buying this camera. I'm not sure how it's in the US or UK, Canada, if the, the camera is already back ordered at the time you're watching this video. But I have the feeling that Nikon did the right move, definitely, just to get rid of that bad Nikon image, which uh, social media somehow put them on. I have the feeling that this camera might convert people into the Nikon system. Let's see. Yeah, when I turn the knobs, it feels great, to be honest. All right, enough of this rant. I'm, I hope I was able to somehow convert my thoughts to you. I hope that uh, I hope that my English was able to, to transfer the message I had. And uh, let's see how what kind of work I can do with this camera. I and mean, don't worry, like it, you three content will continue to be published from me. I'm just curious about cameras. That's all. If you made it until this point of this video, thank you very much. You deserve the like. And uh, if you want to support my small little channel, just check the field links below in the description. And if you want to check out why I think film photography is expensive like shooting Leica, just click on this video.